Hi friends, Tony DeWitt here, Missouri Appellate Attorney and a guy who likes to make the law make sense on YouTube. Here's what we're discussing today. I've had some fun on here with sovereign citizens. For the most part, they're an annoying bunch of badly informed, badly misinformed, I should say, idiots who think the law just doesn't apply to them and apparently slept through high school government class. There's usually stupid but largely harmless, although they do have a tendency to clog up jails uh, because they typically wind up being arrested for not having a driver's license and then go through the entire mantra that uh, they have been taught. It's annoying. I'm sure judges absolutely hate it, but it's also one of the things that you have to put up with in a free country. But not all of them are just stupid and harmless. Many of them are stupid and violent. The one we're going to talk about today, the first one we're going to talk about today, is the man who allegedly shot the lieutenant from the Memphis PD who went to give him a ticket. That officer took four rounds and wound up in critical condition in the hospital. So the person who allegedly did this is Geronimo Key. He was arrested for this crime on March 8th, and he had a bond appearance, and it was set at $175,000. Then he had his initial appearance on March 11th. During the traffic stop, the lieutenant tried to get Key to sign his citation for speeding, according to Key's arrest affidavit. Now, many of you probably know Signing, the, or signing the, the citation does not admit guilt. It merely is a promise to appear in court and answer for the, for the citation. A lot of times people don't want to sign, and that's okay as long as you don't mind going to jail because your signature on that little piece of paper is your get-out-of-jail-free card. Under Tennessee law, failure for a violator to sign a citation is an arrestable offense. And while he was trying to convince Key to sign this citation, the court documents say that Key claimed several times, you're going to have to kill me. Well, I would assume that put the officer on edge, but he probably thought that like a lot of these sovereign citizens, he was just annoying and stupid. But he then shot the man four times. So after walking into the courtroom for his initial appearance, the judge, Judge Johnson, Ask him if he'd be able to make his $175,000 bond, which the Memphis police, by the way, thought was way too low. It's since been raised to $500,000. And here is that interaction. Being in charge with the class A felony of criminal attempt first degree murder, felony intentionally evading arrest in an automobile, and pulling a firearm with intent to commit a felony. Your bond is set at $175,000. Are you going to be able to make your bond? I'm going to take the bond I'm not going to the bond Now, here is what he said there. All criminal cases are commercial. I am a natural man created by Yahweh and subject to natural law. Let the record show that. So that's right out of the Sovereign Citizen playbook. I'm not sure what the record's showing, but okay. Are you able to make your $175,000 bond? Okay. What do you have? I have a report right here. It shows it shows the county's holding me against my will. Right. I'm sure they are holding you against your will. So the judge there said, I'm not sure what the record is showing, but okay. Judge Johnson said, Are you able to make your one hundred and seventy five thousand dollar bond? Mushmouth then says Shelby County is holding me against my will. Through coercion, assault, and torture, they have forced my fingerprints through the intake process. I have the report right here that shows Shelby County is holding me against my will. 
Well, at that point, the judge says, all right, I'm sure they're holding you against your will. I'm asking you if you're able to make your bond. So rinse and repeat. I'm asking if you're able to make your bond. That's not that just doesn't even make sense. All criminal cases are commercial. You mean like a TV commercial? Right. And you're subject to the laws of the state of Tennessee as well. Maritime law. Are we on a ship? begins this all cases all criminal cases are commercial which is complete nonsense of course but that never stops a sovereign citizen that sentence doesn't even make any sense all criminal cases are commercial you mean like a tv commercial key then made comments about an artificial burden and he was talking about the 14th amendment and he said he wasn't subject to admiralty or maritime law which provoked the judge asking are we on a ship after several rounds of this nonsense where he wouldn't answer the judge's question, the court ordered a mental health assessment, which I think is probably a good idea. And he went out of the courtroom saying, I'm a natural man created by Yahweh and subject to natural law. Well, <clears throat> this is not the first time that a sovereign citizen got crosswise with police in this area. Two police officers from West Memphis, Arkansas, were shot and killed several years ago by two men claiming this status. Those two were never tried for their crimes because they were not subject to the jurisdiction of the Arkansas courts. No, not because of their natural man status, but because of high-velocity lead poisoning and their lack of a heartbeat or respiration owing to having been shot by the local sheriff, his deputy, and a fish and game warden who crashed his truck into the van the men were driving and used his AK, I'm sorry, used his AR against their AK-47s. The two men who were involved, one of them was the 38-year-old father, the other was his 16-year-old son, and both of them were killed. Now, I'm not going to use their names because I don't want this dangerous ideology claiming them as martyrs. And I don't want to deal with the 72 different comments we'll get saying what heroes they were. Because people who shoot at police officers are not heroes. They are zeros. But now, every now and again, the system works. And we find one of these guys who gets caught and tried. And this is one of those stories. This is from the Supreme Court of Florida, because, of course, Florida man. It's Everett G. Miller versus the state of Florida. It is a per curiam opinion, which, as we've discussed on here before, means that no one judge wrote it. This is a case involving Everett Glenn Miller, who appeals his convictions and death sentences for the first-degree premeditated murders of Kissimmee police officers Matthew Baxter and Richard Sam Howard, both of whom were shot twice in the head from close range in 2017. We have jurisdiction for the reasons we explain. We affirm Miller's conviction and death sentences. It says Miller does not appeal his separate convictions and sentences for one count of resisting law enforcement officer without violence and one count of carrying a concealed firearm. Well, I'm glad they were reasonable about that. On August 18, 2017, at 9.30 p.m., Miller pulled his car over and angrily inserted himself into a conversation that Officer Baxter was having with three individuals who were loitering on a street corner. At Miller's request, Officer Baxter called his supervisor to the scene. Another one right out of the Sovsit playbook. At Miller's request, uh, after the supervisor, Sergeant Howard, arrived, Miller made certain comments that caused Sergeant Howard to instruct the three loiterers to leave the area. Soon thereafter, both officers had been shot twice in the head. When Miller was arrested in Roscoe's, a local bar, later that night he was carrying two firearms, including the murder weapon, a small 22 caliber revolver capable of being concealed in the palm, and a 9mm, which they won't talk about just right yet. Before the murders, Miller, a former Marine, had been making hateful and anti-police race-based social media posts, including this post just, early, just hours earlier. 
I am, am I the only one? And then those uh, rather troubling words there. At trial, Miller did not dispute that he killed both officers. The defense instead argued that premeditation was lacking and that Miller committed second-degree murder because that would have spared him the death penalty. The jury ultimately convicted Miller on two counts of first-degree premeditated murder and later unanimously recommended the death sentence. So the state presented lots of testimony, the law enforcement officers, a jailhouse informant, medical examiners, employees of Roscoe, and the state also introduced, among other things, forensic evidence, a video taken by one of the loiterers showing some of Miller's interaction with Officer Baxter and Miller's social media posts expressing animus against the police. The evidence established that on the night of the murders at the location where the murders were to occur, Baxter and Maribel Gonzalez King, who had an open beer container, and her two friends, nicknamed Dash and Blaze, who were all loitering on a corner in Kissimmee. King knew Officer Baxter and Sergeant Howard from previous interactions. Baxter was in full police uniform, had a marked car, and was, according to King, calm and relaxed like normal. During Baxter's interaction with the three individuals, Miller pulled up in his vehicle, stopped suddenly, got out, and walked toward Officer Baxter. After an obnoxiously loud Miller told Baxter to stop harassing people and requested that Officer Baxter call his supervisor, Baxter radioed for Sergeant Howard, and he arrived within minutes, and he stayed calm the whole time, according to King. Neither officer acted aggressively, threatened to use a weapon, or gave any commands to Miller. Sergeant Howard's demeanor changed after Miller commented that he feared for his life and was eligible to carry a concealed weapon. Upon hearing those words, Howard instructed King and her friends to move along. King, the last to walk away, made it only halfway down the street when she heard two gunshots, a pause, and then two more gunshots. After hearing the car speed away, King looked back and saw two officers on the ground. A woman who lived close by also heard those noises. She looked outside, saw the officers, and called 911. The first officers to arrive at the scene found that the bodies were unusually situated. Baxter and Howard, each with a fully loaded pistol still in their holster, were on their backs, feet straight, arms to their side, and were lying parallel next to each other a few feet apart. In other words, the bodies of both men had been positioned. Howard had no defensive wounds, a near-contact wound on the left side of his head in the temporal region, and a near-contact or intermediate gunshot wound just above the upper lip. Officer Baxter had some abrasions that were consistent with a fight or altercation, but also consistent with simply felling or being scraped on the pavement. Baxter also had two gunshot wounds to the head, one through the lower lip, and the other to the back side, left side of his head, both of which were contact wounds. The four bullets were ultimately recovered during the autopsies. And later that night, they essentially found this guy at Roscoe's and arrested him. And one of the things that was of issue here was whether or not there was premeditation. I think it's fairly inferable that there was a great deal of premeditation. He's in his car. He's out looking for a cop. He finds a cop. He goes up. He calls for a supervisor so that he can get not just one, but two police officers. He manages to say a few things that cause the cops to shoo the young ladies away. And the next thing that happens is he pulls this gun and shoots the two officers. That is fairly obvious to me that there was a great deal of premeditation here. A great deal of thought went into this. It wasn't like a second-degree situation. In a second-degree murder situation, it's the heat of passion. Somebody says something. Somebody does something. Somebody tries to, to, you know, hurt you or whatever, and then you pull out a gun and you shoot them. Well, that's second-degree murder, but when you go after a police officer and they don't have any defensive wounds and no voices were raised, anything like that that anybody would have heard, it's fairly inferable you've got premeditation there. This was a tragic, tragic case. At the end of all of the testimony, the jury came back and recommended the death penalty for both murders. 
and they found the statutory aggravating factors and all of that. The jury unanimously recommended death sentences for each murder, finding beyond a reasonable doubt the existence of all four proposed aggravators, namely the victim was a law enforcement officer in his performance of his official duties, defendant was previously convicted of another capital felony or of a felony involving the use or threat of violence to another person based on the contemporaneous murders of Baxter and Howard. The capital felony was a homicide committed in cold, calculated, and premeditated a manner without any pretense of moral or legal justification. And the the capital felony was committed to disrupt or hinder lawful exercise of a governmental function or enforcement of laws. Each juror also found no mitigating circumstances were established. And then the the court, after the jury recommends the death sentence, the court has to impose it or come up with a reason not to. In this case, the court did impose it. They hold what's called a Spencer hearing. They did give him credit for one statutory mitigating factor, which is namely that he had no significant history of prior criminal activity. But in spite of finding that mitigating factor, the court imposed the death sentence. It went up to the Supreme Court. He raised seven issues in this appeal, and uh, the race, religion, and political beliefs they felt were absolutely relevant. The they essentially the defense challenged them on the basis of relevance, and they were very clearly relevant because this guy had said he was going to you know take it out on cops. All of this sort of goes to the whole issue of whether or not at the end of the day there was any reason for the jury not to convict him or the jury not to impose the uh, death penalty. Given the fact that he had essentially admitted that he committed second-degree murder, the real issue was whether or not there was premeditation, and the court here finds that all of the evidence that was admitted indicates that there was sufficient premeditation. This sovereign citizen idea, the sovereign citizen theology, I think, it's almost like a religion for these people. I think it is so dangerous. But now I want to do a postscript about Matthew Baxter and Sam Howard. These were the two officers killed, and Baxter has been remembered on the Kissimmee Police Facebook page. He's remembered as a great patrol officer who would help anybody. And Sam Howard not only died while protecting those women that Miller had inserted himself into the conversation with. He not only died doing that, but he went on to save five additional lives after he died because he had signed his donor card on his Florida driver's license. His heart and lungs and kidneys went to five different people. And that, I think, is a further testament to what an absolutely great person that officer was. Well, that's what I have for you today. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments down below. Like, share, subscribe, you know all the stuff we ask you to do. And of course, if you have the opportunity today, maybe flip over that driver's license and think about signing your donor card. You know, after you're gone, after you no longer can be resuscitated, if your brain happens to suffer an injury and you can never come back and be the person you were before, wouldn't it feel really great for your family to know that you thought enough of the lives of others to donate your organs, which you were not going to need any longer, and they went on to do good things for other good people? Just a thought of a kindness that you might consider doing today. Have a terrific day, and catch me down here at the beach again next time. If you like this video, here are a few others you might try, and don't forget to subscribe. Have a terrific day, guys.